Hello, brethren, it's your tutor and Mr. Sensor again. The following video is about English language paper two. Particularly, we're going to talk about transformation. When you talk about transformation, it is a certain section in English language which is worth 10 marks and it's going to contain rewrites. But in this video, I'm only going to share with you the conditional type of rewrites. The conditional type of rewrites under English language examination curriculum type of syllabus are those rewrites which starts with unless. So when we say conditional rewrites, we are saying these are rewrites which are based on an imaginative condition in a sentence. How do we mean? These rewrites are going to provide a condition in a sentence that's going to be given in a paper. Then you are going to be told to rewrite the following or the same sentence under the same condition. But mind you, before I explain this in a detailed way, understand that when we write it, the first important thing is to maintain the meaning. You can either maintain or change the language. Let's begin. Let's say this is question one. So if this is a question, Tell me your name or I will slap you. Tell me your name or I will slap you. Then we are told to start with unless. To the printed words in a sentence in an exam paper, we aren't allowed to change, such that we are obliged or we are restricted to start with what has been started for us with. So like in this case, tell me your name is a condition. And now, the outcome, if the person doesn't tell the other person the name, is that he or she will be slapped. Tell me your name, or I will slap you. So when we talk about unless, we will firstly talk about what should be done to avoid a consequence. What should be done is that the name should be told, or else the person will be slapped. So we we'll say, unless, tell me your name, or I will slap you. So it's like you have to imagine yourself in a sentence, by imagining that you are talking to someone. So you say, unless you, you will meet the person being talked to. Unless you, what should be done? Tell me your name. Then we are going to put a comma. A comma will get the place of who or. Unless you tell me your name. Then, if the person tells the other person the name, the person will not be slapped because the person has done as he instructed. So, unless you tell me your name, I will. But after will, which means an intention, we should be able to mean that the action or the consequence won't be resulted. I will not slap you. So this is how it should be. So whenever we come across rewrites that can demand that we should start with unless, after the word that will mean an intent or intention of someone, we should be able to know that we have to stop the action. So unless you tell me your name, I will not slap you. Which in other words, tell me your name or I will slap you. So that's the first example. I hope you've gotten the idea. So here is another question, it's saying she will die if she doesn't go to the hospital. She will die if she doesn't go to the hospital. This doesn't necessarily mean the person has died. It's a condition of what can happen if a certain condition is not followed. What can happen is that she can die or she will die. And the condition is that if she doesn't go to the hospital. 
So the condition is if she does go to the hospital, this person won't die. So I'm going to say, unless, like I said, unless always should always be maintained as the printed word. So I'm going to say, unless she, then to this go, we're going to say goes because it's an assumption. It's not happening there and then. Unless she goes to the hospital, unless she goes to the hospital, you put a comma. What will happen now is that she will not die because the condition has been followed. So I'm going to say she will not die. And this is our best, we need to put it. Unless she goes to the hospital, she will not die. Implying in the first sentence, we say it like she will die if she doesn't go to the hospital. So this was our example two. Expect the same to be applied if you are to face the question in an exam. So let's do another last example. So example three is saying, give me some of your bananas and I will show you the way. Give me some of your bananas and I will show you the way. Then begin, unless. So the condition is that the person demanding for the bananas should be given and that the person will be able to be ready to show the way. In that case, we mean, give me some of your bananas is a condition. And if that condition isn't followed, it, then the person will not be shown the way. Otherwise, the person is willing to show the way only if he is given some bananas. So I'm going to say, unless we are talking to the other person, unless you, then we put in what should be done. You give me some of your bananas, unless you give me some of your bananas. Don't forget to use a comma. Then since I will say I will show you the way, in this case I'm not I'm now going to say I will not show you the way. So unless you give me some of your bananas, I will not show you the way. Give me some of your bananas and I will show you the way. Brethren out there, I hope you find this video very beneficial. Kindly repose, rewatch until you tend to understand, then apply the same knowledge of the same concepts in some of the previous examples papers from this very moment to the next time.